Zijn brede multiculturele ervaring in leiderschap en missionair werk maakt dat hij een veelgevraagd spreker is voor conferenties en kerken in Afrika, Europa en Noord-Amerika. Als voorname oorzaak van armoede wijst hij hebzucht en corruptie aan. Daarom heeft hij de anticorruptiebeweging Black Monday opgericht. Zijn droom is recht, vrede en vreugde zien in zijn land. Bishop Zek spreekt over de politieke rol van de kerk. Delighted to be here. Totally, totally delighted to be here. I'm really glad. It's always a joy to come here and uh, I can see some familiar faces, only a few in this crowd. Praise the Lord. I like to greet you in the way that I learned many years ago in Uganda. And I simply say, peace be with you. And your response, hallelujah. And when you do, shout it aloud. You look like you really mean it. And it simply means praise God. Uh, you remember when Jesus had just risen from the dead and the disciples were terrified. They wondered their future all gleam. And then he showed up and he said, peace be with you. Shalom. Shall we do that? Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Uh, no, you're not serious. You can do better. So when you say hallelujah, you raise up your hands, right? Hallelujah, right? Shall we go? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Politics. 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 When you hear that word, what does it mean for you? Politics as we know it today. Talk to your neighbor. Tell them one word that comes to mind. Politics. Now I'm serious. Talk to your neighbor. Just one word that comes to mind. Right? Uh, let's look for those who said nothing. So, okay, what word came to you? What word did your neighbor tell you? What word? Shout it loud. Somebody here in front? Uh, you have to say it in English. Somebody said it to me in Dutch. My goodness. Uh, I, I would have to learn a special language now, yes? Responsibility. Wonderful. Yes, somebody shout it loud. Equality. Donald Trump. Right. Keep going. Power. Corruption. Complicated. Somebody this side. Abuse. Somebody that side. Concessions. Opportunities, influence, nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. You know, isn't it true, generally speaking, that especially as Christians, when we think and talk about politics, it's often the negative things that come, corruption, injustice, repression, Power, abuse, you know what I mean. Donald Trump. I mean, the U.S. elections are fresh, aren't they? Were you amazed? Were you amazed? No, you were not. Eh? You were not surprised. I mean, I, I was there. I watched it, and I thought, wow. Now, I am told that you have your own next year in March, right? I hope you do better. But let's not get there. Let's not get there. Politics. Politics. It is true, growing up in Uganda, growing up as a young lad at university, I was actually told politics is a dirty game. And one of the things we learned very, very early that if you wanted to be a follower of Jesus, you didn't do politics. Politics is dirty. And amazingly, of course, it's the dirty that played it. And no wonder a country like mine, as you'll soon see, is a country that has known so much trouble and suffering because of politics. Politics, politics. I think we need to ask, what is politics as God intended? Politics as God intended. Why? It's a very important question because politics defines the way we live together. Politics defines actually the way we inhabit life together. If you think about it, 
Education is politics, isn't it? Healthcare is politics. You have amazing roads, politics. Water is politics. You know it. Love is politics. The Bible teaches, love your neighbor. And that neighbor is not the one you really want to hang around with. It's the one that hates you. Love your neighbor who is other than you. Love politics. Peace is politics. It's true. Because living in harmony is political. Politics is about the way we live together. We inhabit life together. And those who wield political power are those who determine how our lives are shaped in the public arena, how we inhabit space, education, health care, those things that matter to us, the strength of the currency, those things that matter. So those who wield political authority Somehow, they determine laws. That's why we must elect them. So politics, the way God intended, is a question we must ask. And the Bible gives us answers. Remarkable. For the Bible itself, the Bible itself is a political book. From Genesis to Revelation, politics is there. The people of Israel, political nation to this day. So if you think about the narrative of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, if you think of the way in which Scripture is divided, if you think about how Jesus, Moses, spoke about the Old Testament, how does it say? It's the law, the prophets, and the writing. In the law, the first five books of Moses, what do we see? Right in the beginning, the garden where there is human flourishing, there is harmony between creation, humanity. It's simply amazing. The story of the garden is such a great vision of what it ought to be when we live together in harmony. It's there in Genesis. The people of Israel, their lives, a political life, there is a vision of God given to them as a people after God. And of course we know the prophets speak about what it is that God required of them. Micah says it powerfully. What does the Lord require of you, O people of God? To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. That is what God required of his people. And God. That is politics. Justice, peace, mercy. The psalmist. This gives you a vision of what it ought to be. Righteousness, justice, the New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles. Of course, the Gospels, full of it. The Sermon on the Mount. What a picture. Blessed are the peacemakers. Did you know it doesn't say blessed are the peacekeepers? It doesn't say, blessed are the peace lovers. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, those engaged in the political work of bringing about peace. The Sermon on the Mount, a piece of political literature. We go on. The Paul writes, really the work that he speaks about, politics, it's all there. The vision we have in Revelation of a new heaven and a new earth where what? Righteousness, justice will dwell. The vision we have is a vision of the king of kings, a new heaven, a new earth where justice will reign. Politics as God intended, clearly, in the biblical narrative, you understand. It's about the flourishing of creation. It's about the flourishing of human dignity. It's about harmony. It's about justice. It's that there will be righteousness, peace, and joy for his people together. Blacks and whites, red and yellow, whatever color. Arabs and Muslims and Christians and those who believe and don't believe, all made by God. Politics is something how we live together. What a challenge for us. Did you know that Paul writing in Romans chapter 13, in describing those who are engaged directly in political work, those who Paul writes, involved in the full-time work of administration. Do you know how Paul describes them in chapter 13 of Romans? You know? 
He calls them God's servants, ministers, full-time ministers, that those engage in the work of determining how we are governed, how our hospitals are roads for us in Uganda, in Africa, how that happens. I do believe that the vision of the gospel is not what we see. Let me share with you some pictures very quickly uh, about my own life engaged in this work, this political work. Will it come on? Can you put on one or two pictures, please? They have come. Huh? So there we are. Involved in the fight against corruption. And you would think people should clap for you. Not at all. Not at all. The next one, please. Uh, can you come here? Please come. Come and show you what they did to me. Just come, yeah. I didn't want him. They just come here. So you see what they are doing to me? I was fighting to have uh, justice, human rights, against corruption. Are you ready for this? So this is what they did to me. Ready for this? This is the way they are calling me. You clap for him. I mean... Thank you, thank you. I'm glad it's my son here. I mean, that's... I, I could go on. The next picture, you know. Out of jail. Keep going. Next one. There is a man who is just simply seeking to... Elections. What's happening? Yeah, keep going. Uh, there is a lady. Just, you know, she's being nearly strangled. Keep going. Uh, There's a pastor who is engaged in uh, just praying. He was arrested praying. Keep going. Another pastor, you see him with his Bible, arrested for praying. Keep going. Politics as God intended it. What's God looking for among you? Those who do it differently. That's what God is looking for. Those who are called full-time ministers in Romans, Romans chapter 13, it really gives us an amazing, an amazing, I, I, I think we should look at it. We should read it together very, very quickly. Romans 13. Uh, everyone must submit to governing authorities, to those who govern, those who wield power. For they are God's servants, verse 3, verse 4, to do you good. By the way, not every government authority must be applauded. It's only those who do their work for the good of all, the common good. They are God's servant, verse 4. Verse 4 again, God's servant. Verse 6, God's servants, God's servants, God's servants. Why do we have politics now as dirty? It's because we do not have those who are conscious. They are in the service of the king of kings, the creator of the universe. It's because you and I, the church, instead of the church providing those servants who serve God, that there may be common good, harmony, that there will be Living together in peace. On the contrary, those who wield political power, they do it for themselves and for their tribes. And by the way, it's here too as well. Don't you think Africans are the owners of tribalism? I see it here. Dutch for the Dutch people. You know, Dutchland, you know, and so on and so forth. The Swiss. They are Switzerland. They are Americans now. It's a white thing. I mean... Where did we get this wrong? God's design is that we live, politics is intended, that there must be human flourishing, that the creation will not be abused. That's God's design. And I hope that today as you listen and as you think justice, politics, you will be able to say, what went wrong? Why have we surrendered the world to those who do it not for God, not for the kingdom, but for themselves, for their tribes, for their wishes? They abuse power. Why? They do not know that they are servants of God. What is God looking for? Servants who determine the way we live together in a way that honors him. What's going to be your response? Four things I want to say as I conclude. First, Reflect. Think deeply. Seek to understand. Don't be in a hurry. Secondly, repentance. 
God calls us to repent because we have surrendered this mission to those who do not know him. Repentance. I pray that God, through this conference, will draw his church in this country to repentance. Thirdly, renewal. So the first is reflect, the second is repentance, the third is renew, a commitment to Jesus the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Shall we say that together? Jesus is Lord of every sector. We must commit ourselves to renew our commitment to be servants of God wherever. And then lastly, reclaim. We must reclaim politics as Christian mission. We must. We must because Jesus is Lord of all, of everything. He, the one who died a political death, he who said when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You and I must be able to live out that prayer, reclaiming every space that there will be human flourishing and the flourishing of human dignity, the flourishing of the environment, not the abuse we see because of the people who are in politics. So, brothers and sisters, as we pray that prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. Let's commit four things. Reflect. This conference today gives you the opportunity to reflect. Repentance, where we have omitted or committed sins, spaces that we've surrendered. Renew. And then lastly, reclaim. May God bless you.